So we just read chapter 2 of the book of Acts. Um, we read 1 to 13, but we will be looking further to that. And as I said at the beginning, we are celebrating today Pentecost as well. And what do we know about Pentecost? What do we know about the actual event? It used to be also the Old Testament. We won't go there, but now we know that it's celebrated for the coming of the Spirit. Before we continue that, let me just say a quick prayer and we will get to the Word of God together. Lord, we thank you that we could be here this morning. We thank you for your word. God, I pray that your presence will bless us. I pray that your spirit, as we are celebrating today, Lord, that has come. And now we can sense it that is in our midst. Lord, I pray that it will open our mind and open our hearts. May we receive your word today. May we, we understand it. And God, may we be changed according to your will. Inspire us, equip us, strengthen us, I pray. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So here we have a wonderful accounts. We do love the book of Acts. We do love um, chapter 2 that we read because there is so many exciting things happening there. Um, we know that, as it was said earlier, that Jesus was taken into heaven and then he made a promise to the church. He made the promise to the disciples and the people that were together. And he said to them that, I am going, but I'm not going to leave you alone. Go in the upper room and pray because God, my Father, will be sending you a comforter. You will not be alone. You will not be orphaned. You will be, um, the Holy Spirit will come and um, you will not be alone into what um, you are equipped to do. And in this account now, as we read, we see something wonderful. Ten days they are praying. Ten days they are together. So on and so forth. And then we have a number of miracles that happen. We have the building that is shaking. Uh, we don't like earthquakes, do we? So the building is shaking. Tongues of fire in, in people's head, if you like. And these people are filled with the presence of God. They are filled with the Spirit, with the Holy Spirit. And they begin to speak in different tongues. Tongues they don't understand. But all of a sudden, as they are speaking out of their mouths, the people that are down, that they all have come. Remember, this is a big celebration that people have come from different parts of the empire there. And these people are listening to God's wonderful words, to God's wonderful truths in their own language. So they're shocked. They're, they didn't expect that. They didn't come for that. And they hear, in a sense, a preaching, testimony, wonderful things about God in their own native languages. We see uh, Peter being inspired and equipped without having his two, three days and commentaries to prepare a preaching. He comes out full of power, full of power of the Spirit and anointing. He preaches there and over 3,000 people. Can you imagine that? Over 3,000 people come to Jesus Christ. I won't tell you the title of, of my sermon because it will give away the answer that I want from you. But um, here's the question I want to ask you. Out of all of the events that I just said, out of the old miracles that I just uh, numbered to you, which would you say is one of the most significant? Which one would you say it fills your heart when you, when you read that passage? Not all at once, you know, you can... The Spirit came down. Powerful, isn't it? Any, any, other, any other miracle that you see there and it encourages you? The tongues of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Any other? Hallelujah, yes. 
Yes, wonderful. One more. Sorry? Yes, the interpretation of um, what was said. Fantastic. Yes. The boldness that the Spirit, the power of the Spirit came to Peter, yeah? Amen. Amen. Yes, a very good point. So in the Old Testament, that was not the case. There was significant people who God would anoint them. But now is the time where everyone will be filled with the Spirit. That's what you're saying. Fantastic. Yes. I want to bring another significance where the point we are going to focus today. I think there is a lack of acknowledgement because we, we, re we read and we, we have a number of preachings in any of these miracles. But one that I think precedes all of these. In a sense, all of what we have just said are preparation to that one significant miracle. And what we don't really speak often is the transformation of life of all of those who came to hear the truth of Jesus Christ. I think that is one of the most significant miracles that you and I can ever experience in our life. The transformation of coming to know Jesus as a Lord and Savior of your lives. Because brothers and sisters, we see here the foundation of the, of the first church, okay? And what God had done up to this point, God had prepared the people. God had prepared them to come to the point where they can have the boldness, where they can have the inspiration, where they can have the ability to speak the truth of the Lord. And that truth of who Jesus is, when it landed in the ears of the people, the scripture says that their, life, their lives were changed. Think about your life right now. Would you say that when you came to know Jesus as the Lord and Savior of your life, that your life changed? Yes. Yeah? I can certainly say it for myself. I am here because of what Jesus has done in my life. I would never be in this position today. It is because of the yes that I said to Jesus when I was 15 years old, a few years now. It has led me to every decision to where I am today. And I can, say, I can say of one decision in my life that I will never regret. One decision in my life that I will never regret. And we see that there is power in the name of Jesus. There is precedence and there is power in believing of who Jesus is, knowing the truth, accepting the truth, and that truth, when we face Jesus, it changes our life. Amen? We have stories in Scripture. We, a few weeks ago, when we opened this place, we looked in the life of Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a very successful man in his, in his life, in his min, in, not ministry, in his a theft, if you like. Um, but when he met Jesus, and that day when Jesus came to his life, his life changed. There was a visible, a significant transformation of his life when he met Jesus. He saw the truth and the truth set him free. That's what scripture says. Jesus himself says that I am the way, I am the truth. And I am the life. That's why the transformation comes to our life, brothers and sisters. Because we all fight for the information of the truth. We all need the truth in our life. And only when we come to Jesus, our eyes open. Because we see the truth of everything that we need in our life. And Jesus is the life because through Him we can go to the Father and have the hope that is 100% with security that we will be with God in eternity. We have that eternal life. That's what it says, I am the life. And I am the way, he says. 
That through Jesus we can find the way to God. Through Jesus we can find the right way and come away from darkness or whatever we may have been or are going through right now. We can orientate ourselves through the truth because following the way that Jesus gives us. There is power in knowing such truth. And it doesn't matter how old this truth will be, it will always be important for us. It will always be significant to our life. In Acts chapter 9, we also see a big dramatic change. We have a, a person called Saul, also known as Paul. He was a passionate man for God. He thought that what he is doing was the right thing, that he was following God. He even pursues up to the point where he becomes a Pharisee. He, and that was a lot of study and a lot of sacrifice in life, a lot of commitment, because he thought that was the right way. That's how you serve the Lord. That's where the truth is. To the point that he was persecuting a church of Jesus Christ, which he thought that was the right thing to put away any blasphemation, to put away any, um, any lies, if you like, that these people are preaching. And then on the Damascus road, what happens? This man, Saul, known as Paul, meets the truth, meets Jesus Christ. And in that moment when he meets Jesus Christ, he first asks, well, who are you? Why are you in front of me? And he tells him, I am the Jesus that you are persecuting. You are kicking against the thorns. You're only going to hurt yourself. And in that moment, the truth hit his life. And there was no other way but for him to change. No other way but for him to be transformed. Amen. And it encourages me, brothers and sisters, it encourages, it should encourage us, it encourages us that no matter how big our mountain may be, no matter how big our difficulty or our darkness or our confusion may be, when we come to Jesus Christ, there is nothing that can be more powerful than we are dealing with in our life. If we want to change, if we want a transformation, we come to Jesus. Because Jesus is the power. He is the truth. He is the way to change us. And for us to accept the transformation we need in our lives. And coming back to the passage, brothers and sisters. We see another thing here. Jesus does not transform only personal lives. He also can transform communities. Amen? He has the power to change communities. To impact in communities and in big numbers of people. The scripture tells us that on verses further on on the same chapter, 34 and 35 and up to 44 and 45, there were things happening after they had heard the truth of Jesus Christ. There were some wonderful things happening there. These people, they did not wake up in that morning to go to church. These people had come for their religious celebration, for the religious rites that they had to do. They come to Jerusalem and then they meet Peter. Peter coming up full of power, boldness, and he preaches the truth to them. And the power of the Spirit opens their eyes to see the truth. And then scripture, scripture tells us, brothers and sisters, that on that time, um, when they accepted Jesus, over 3,000 people and daily the number was increasing and something happened in the history of Jerusalem that had never happened before. 
If you would have walked up, down the roads in there, you would have seen all over the place, house for rent, a house for sale, garage sale, all sorts of things. These people, they decided to sell their homes. They decided to sell their goods. They decided to, to, to give things up. And I don't think they were selling their home, their only home, so they would be homeless. I think these people had um, like holiday homes or homes that they could afford to, to give away. Because later on, Scripture tells us that they were meeting in their homes. So if they sold their homes, they would not have homes to meet to. So they, they sold anything and everything they could afford. And the wonderful thing is, they brought all of that to the church. They brought all of that to church so they could help the church ministry in helping the widows, helping, helping the, orf, the um, homeless, and so on and so forth. But these people were transformed as a community because of the truth of Jesus Christ. Would, would have this happen if they wouldn't have heard Jesus Christ? If they wouldn't have heard the message that was preached to them, the truth of Jesus? I don't think it would. But again, it gives us that feeling of gladness and fulfillment into their hearts. That having accepted Jesus for who He is in their life, the material world did not have a high significance in their life anymore. Their life had a meaning. Their life took a new shape. And it says that they were meeting together. They were empowered by the love of God um, as they were doing things together, selling the goods and, and giving to the needy. Um, and exactly what the Holy Spirit wanted them to do, they were doing there. Because they desired to live a living testimony to the world of God's love. That was the transformation that was in their life. They wanted to live their life as a living testimony to show the needy, to show the poor, the love of God that He has for them. They were proclaiming God's gospel by their own action. You know, so many times when we come to the thought of evangelism, we freeze. What do we say? What do we do? How, how do we go about? Most of us will not have that boldness like Peter to go in front of 3,000 people and, and preach. But actually, one of the most impacts that I understand here is the way they lived their life. It's the way they, they acted, they, they interacted with the community. Going to people, meeting with people, helping the people, having things together that impacted the life of many people. And that too, it is an evangelism, brothers and sisters, and a very successful one, I think. Because building relationships, it's very important. Building friendships is very important. It shows God's love to those people. I think one of the great things that uh, happened on Friday was that we were doing just that. Maybe not even recognizing that we were doing. We had the opportunity of opening the building and having people come in. People we never met before. And we were there to show God's love to them. Interact with them. Next time they will see us, they will know who we are. Next time we have the ability to speak to them, they will know where we belong. And that is the way for us to show God's love to them. I think it's the same thing that will continue to happen, brothers and sisters, in our life and in the life that are, that are around us. Jesus is alive. And one of the most significant things that we can have in our life is holding on to Jesus. 
holding on to the truth that was proclaimed in our life and making sure that we do that same thing with those that are around us. One of the greatest help that we can bring to people is the truth of Jesus Christ. Truth that can set them free. Truth that can help them feel the peace of God that we do. An ability for them to, to come and pray and open their hearts to God. This is our calling. This is also an equipment for us by the same Holy Spirit that He wants us to do today, just as He has inspired the first church, and He will continue to do for generations until Jesus comes back again. Amen? Let us pray. Oh Lord, we thank You that you are a God that never leaves us, never forsakes us. Lord, we thank you that you spoke to us, you continue to speak to us. Lord, you will continue to speak until the end of days. We thank you for scripture. We thank you that we can see what happened on the day where the Holy Spirit came upon your church equipping us to share the truth of Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray that you will continue to inspire us, Lord. May that fire continue to burn into our hearts, O oh God. May we recognize and may we continue to see the importance that is on us believing in your name. Lord, if we believe that you are alive, we believe that you act in our life. And Lord, we believe that you want to act in the life of those that surround us, in the life of our families, in the life of our friends, in the life of everyone that comes our way, Lord. Because your love, as we sang earlier, has the power to uplift us from darkness, has the power to move us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light that is you. So we thank you, Lord, that you have revealed your truth to us. And we pray, O oh Lord, that you will continue to equip us through your spirit, that we may too send that light into the darkness that surrounds all of us. In Jesus' name I pray and I thank you. Amen. have our last song together in Christ alone. So do stand with me if you can, let's sing. Mm -hmm. 